Today down in the comments, I want to know about your collections, your movie collections, your book collections. Is there a specific bend to them? Do you focus on specific genres? Do you focus on specific writers or directors? What do you like to have physical copies of? Now, I read uh, a lot of books and I do a lot of ebooks, uh, but certain authors I will buy a physical paperback or hardback book. Uh, I kind of want to know what you guys do down in the comments. Hello everyone, I'm Adam Caesar. This is Project Black T-Shirt, the channel where we take a new release or reissue horror movie, sometimes more than one, and we pair it with a piece of horror literature that you will enjoy if you enjoy that movie. Today we're going to be talking about two new release Blu-rays from Arrow Video. Uh, they are uh, the cream of the crop of the July releases. Uh, I'm not counting uh, the delayed Last House on the Left as a July release. Uh, but these are the two movies I was most excited about from the July releases. We're going to talk about those, and then I'm going to give you two, not one, but two book recommendations, brand new releases, uh, to go along with these brand new movie releases. So first we're going to talk about The Case of the Scorpion's Tale. This is directed by Sergio Martino, a uh, Italian director of not just Yali, uh, uh, not just Westerns, not just uh, kind of pseudo-sleazy monster and when animals attack movies, uh, but of everything. He's kind of a, uh, an Italian directing jack-of-all-trades. He, uh, he worked in all of the subgenres, all of the kind of uh, more exploitation-bending subgenres, and he is one of my favorite directors, one of, I think, the most underrated directors, and with this release, uh, Arrow Video is doing one of his better and more underrated works, a great service. Um, spoiler, this is my, probably my favorite of the two uh, releases I'm going to talk about today, but I wanted to put it up front. But The Case of the Scorpion's Tale is a movie that had a release with, I think, No Shame was the was the DVD release. And I, I had that, and I, I remember watching that when it came out. That's probably like, I, dating myself, it's getting old now. Uh, that's probably like 10 or so years ago, so I hadn't seen it since then. But it is a movie that is, as, as I've grown up, I feel like I've grown to appreciate more in this new Blu-ray version of it is is spectacular. It is a Italian-Spanish co-production filmed uh, on location in London and then in Greece. So it's this got it's got this great uh, early 70s, 1971 uh, jet set mood to it. It stars George Hilton and Anita Strindberg. Uh, so if you are a, a spaghetti western or an, a, a Gialli fan, you will know their faces. You will know their names. Very restrained giallo. This is not, um, this is not Lucio Fulci, this is not Lizard in a Woman's Skin, even though Anita Strindberg's in it. This is not, this is not a, a, a super gory, super sexualized, uh, film. This is, uh, very stylish, very, um, workmanlike in its construction and its presentation. Uh, one of the things that stands out about uh, this Gialli, rather than maybe some of the more famous ones, is I think the mystery here actually makes sense. It actually adds up. Um, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit uh, Hitchcock. There's a, there's a certain moment um, around the halfway mark, which is clearly uh, reminiscent of Psycho, but it, it is uh, it is it is a mystery a murder mystery film first and foremost, and it and it. Uh, all the pieces add up. It's got some really standout sequences. The kills are not crazy over the top or gory. Uh, they are pretty uh, subdued. But there is just some nice uh, flavor in there for horror fans. So if you are if you are a uh, giallo neophyte uh, or you don't 100% love the genre, there's a, there's gonna be stuff you're gonna like in here uh, in this movie. As far as the release. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm loving the direction that Arrow's um, Euro films are taking, the, the, the direction they're taking with them. They're taking a very kind of film school approach to them. Uh, Martino is still with us, and they, they filmed a, a rather extensive uh, new interview with him. He looks great. His points of conversation are, are, are really interesting. He talks about London. He talks about Greece. He talks about um, certain um, crew members getting credit uh, on the finished film where they maybe didn't actually do that job because there were quotas with the uh, Spanish-French co-productions that he was involved in. Really interesting, and then those the other features kind of echo that. Talk to George Hilton, he kind of shares a little bit of trivia about how he was uh, married to Martino's cousin at the time, and that's how they 
they got in contact. Uh, there is a video essay that talks about Ernesto Gelstaldi, the, uh, the screenwriter, and kind of links the fact that uh, Sergio Martino doesn't have a very pronounced authorial style and how maybe the screenwriters kind of how we apply author uh, theory to these films. That's uh, Troy Howarth. It, very good video essay um, and a, a number of other supplementary materials that really kind of place this film in its context. I really, really like the movie, but the uh, features are kind of the cherry on top to that. This is a this is a excellent release. Don't let it kind of fly under the radar because it's not one of their big limited edition releases like they do with the Argento, um, you know, like double size with the paper box and stuff like that. This is a, a real banner release, and I, and I think any fan of Italian horror cinema, any fan of giallo cinema, uh, should should pick The Case of the Scorpion's Tail, because it's very, very good. Next up is a movie that I hadn't seen, uh, I've heard a lot about, I think I maybe even had a, a, like a, a kind of bargain cheapo DVD of it at one point, but I never, uh, I never threw it on, uh, Doom Asylum, the rather forgotten film of Kristen Davis from Sex and the City. It is uh, Richard Friedman. It is a 1987 slasher parody. Um, it's the, the, the spoofing going on in it isn't uh, quite meta. It's not exactly, you know, a, a scream forerunner. It's just, it has very silly, very nonsensical characters basically in a, in a doom asylum. They are wandering around in abandoned estate asylum, which really is kind of the centerpiece of the film. You can tell that the filmmakers were like, oh, we have this location. Uh, let's get a bunch of uh, younger, fresh-faced actors who are going to be familiar to you. Patty Mullen from Frankenhooker is uh, w one of our uh, lead girls. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of the appeal of this film comes from seeing people pop up, you know, like, oh, uh, the, I know her from Psychos in Love. Like, people that you that you will recognize, I know her from, clearly, uh, Sex and the City. But the film itself didn't do much for me, I have to be honest. It is um, a beautiful-looking transfer. Uh, Arrow should be commended because it is a movie that, that basically went straight to video. They were thinking, oh, we'll get theatrical distribution for this. The, uh, the titling is pillboxed. And then the movie opens up once you get to it because they shot it on 35, so it's a it is a nice looking 35 millimeter film. But there's just not a whole ton going on. I ha I suspect though that there, I'm gonna have people in the comments yelling at me. I love Doom Asylum. Uh, I don't have that nostalgia for it. I hadn't I hadn't seen it when I was younger. It, there are some laughs. There are some outrageous scenes. There are there is some some real goofiness that pops in and out. Uh, but for the most part, it kind of goes like goofiness long period of maybe watch checking. It's a movie that's only 79 minutes long and has a, uh, a good amount of vintage Sweeney Todd black and white footage uh, spliced in so we have a character kind of watching a horror movie in the movie, but it's clearly just there to inflate the time it's just like, to, to make this uh, a feature length movie so they could have sold it to cable, sold it to uh, video cassette. Uh, manufacturers and uh, the special features which are good as as Arrow is, is is want to do they track down people and they talk to them and in some cases when they couldn't talk to them they have archival interviews uh, but that's basically uh, what the director of photography the stars will basically tell you about this film it was a mercenary film not that there's anything wrong with that because we can kind of find art and find enjoyment in these uh, mercenary uh, films, but it was just like, okay, here's, here's a couple bucks, go make a horror movie, we'll, we'll sell it. Uh, that's the, that's the, the inception of Doom Asylum. It does have some pretty cool effects. It does have, it does have some banner moments. The, our main killer has, has, has very extensive hand and face uh, prosthesis, as you can kind of see on the cover. There, there are some neat uh, gore gags and effects that are a little bit ahead of their time, especially with like puppetry and things like that. Vincent J. Gastini does the effects and is a, a, a kind of first or, or close to first job for him and they are cool. I will give you that. But not a hundred percent my cup of tea, maybe not what I had gotten myself hype, hyped for, but your mileage uh, will vary and as always Arrow did an incredible job bringing this movie kind of back to life as it were. So that was The Case of the Scorpion's Tale and Doom Asylum both from Arrow Video. Now if you like uh, movies like this, if you like Gialli, if you like somewhat sillier slasher, I have 
the books for you. First one I'm gonna talk about is called Triple X, and that is that title is a pun. It is about three adult film stars who take up arms against a serial killer that is targeting their community. It's by Scott Cole. This is Triple X by Scott Cole. It is hilarious. It is a, a, a novella, short novel. Uh, if you're familiar with Cole's other work, if you're familiar with uh, Super Ghost, which is, is pretty close in tone, where it's, it's kind of silly, exaggerated, but also has, has, a, has a real heart to it, real, uh, real core of humanity to it. Um, or his shorter work, his shorter bizarro horror work, Slices, Triple X is far and away Cole's best book. It is hilarious. It is, it's hard to describe how funny and weird and tightly packed, because it is like, it is a short book, but it's got a lot going on. It's got more laughs and more gags and more kind of weird world building than most novels, three times its size, uh, three times its word count. I really, really, really uh, think you should pick up Triple X by Scott Cole. Uh, if any of these two movies appeal to you, because it does have a giallo sensibility and it definitely does have a slasher camp parody sensibility to it. The second book I'm going to recommend if you like these kinds of movies is Under the Blade by Matt Serafini. I think I've talked about this book before, but I haven't talked about this edition of Under the Blade by Matt Serafini. It is the new black t-shirt books edition, which yes, I am somewhat associated with, but I don't take any money. It's not my, like, I'm not like profiting off of Matt's hard work, but Under the Blade is a much less silly, uh, much more serious minded kind of mystery, murder mystery thriller. Uh, it basically takes place at the end of the slasher movie. Uh, a young woman escapes, uh, thinks she kills, the kind of mass slasher Jason Voorhees type, My Bloody Valentine type, uh, psycho killer. And then for closure, years later, she comes back to the town uh, where it all happened and basically try, is, is trying to unravel, like, well, what even happened here? What, like, why was there a killer? And it, and it becomes a, a, a mystery thriller at that point. It's, 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 a, it's a mystery thriller with a horror setup, if that makes sense. It's very, very good. This new edition is, is kind of leaner, meaner, better, uh, it's got a beautiful new cover. It's very, very much, and both of these books are so new that I don't even have paperbacks to hold up for you. Uh, but they just came out this week, both of these books, and believe me, they're in ebook and paperback, and they are well worth picking up. All right, that's about, that about does it. That was book recommendations. That was movie recommendations. I'm Adam Caesar. This is Project Black T-shirt. If you wanted to find out more about me, uh, visit my website below. I will send you a free ebook, a uh, free couple short stories, novel sample. If you want to know more about my, my work, follow the channel, subscribe, like, comment, do what thou wilt. Uh, have a great rest of the week.